Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to discuss uses of NADPH. Try to recall from my lecture on uh, pentose phosphate pathway where we produced NADPH as opposed to NADH, right? And uh, at that point I told you that we are going to discuss why we produce NADPH and not NADH. So all these reasons are why, right? There are five reasons why. <laughs> so um, NADPH and NADH share differences uh, because NADPH is a much stronger reducing agent as opposed to NADH so it is used for example in reductive biosynthesis of cholesterol of uh, steroids we'll discuss that in, in more detail under lipid metabolism but for now just rem remember that NADPH is used in the reductive biosynthetic processes right now the second uh, use of uh, NADPH is hydrogen peroxide reduction. Hydrogen peroxide, which is also H2O2, is uh, a free radical. It comes under the family of reactive oxygen species, which are produced uh, normally in aerobic respiration and in other processes that, that require oxygen uh, and uh, you know due to environmental toxins and especially in this era where we have a lot of um, um, you know, toxins present in our environment so hydrogen peroxide is being produced more and more and this uh, hydrogen peroxide if it is not reduced back to water because H2O2 is the chemical formula for H2O2 is the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide it has to be reduced to water H2O right we have to renew, remove one of the oxygen atom from H2O2 to reduce it to water which is harmless. So H2O2 if it stays in the oxidized form it can cause damage, widespread, uh, widespread damage to our cells, to our DNA, to the lipids inside our cells. So uh, you know we have to reduce it and uh, it is associated with inflammatory diseases, with cancers and you might have heard that there is a growing trend of uh, young people having uh, you know premature graying of hair which is because of the toxin present in our environment, also genetic factor uh, but more is concerned with hydrogen peroxide which is not reduced where uh, you are not even consuming uh, the natural antioxidants that can combat this so hydrogen peroxide has to be reduced and that reduction takes place via a tripeptide which is called glutathione this glutathione is formed from three amino acids glycine, glutamine and cysteine right? It has to be in a reduced form in order to reduce this hydrogen peroxide, right? So this reduced glutathione and uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, go into a reaction with each other and ultimately this yields oxidized glutathione and water is formed, right? And this reaction is catalyzed by glutathione peroxidase, which is the enzyme. Now this oxidized glutathione itself is not um, you know, of use to us because it cannot again uh, reduce hydrogen peroxide. It is already oxidized itself, right? So, oxidized glutathione is going to uh, be acted upon by an enzyme called glutathione reductase, which is going to reduce this glutathione back into its reduced form, right? And here, here we're going to use NADPH molecule, which is going to donate one of its hydrogen atoms to the glutathione molecule to form, NA, uh, to form a reduced glutathione molecule and with itself we convert it to NAD positive, NADP positive, right? So this is the, this is the second use of NADPH. Now so moving on to the third use of NAD, NADPH is the cytochrome P450 monooxygenase system. Now monooxygenase, uh, monooxygenases are enzymes, right? What they do is that they incorporate one atom from an oxygen molecule, one from O2, into a compound. For example, if this is a compound, right, they're going to incorporate one atom of oxygen to an H atom to form a hydroxyl, uh, hydroxyl atom, right? Right here. They're going to add oxygen. And one oxygen will be left, right? So what happens is that this RH, for example, this is a compound, and this can have many more carbons, right? For example, this is a steroid, right? Uh, RH plus oxygen 
plus NADPH plus one hydride ion is going to yield a hydroxidated same hydroxidated compound and a water molecule. One of the oxygen I, uh, the one of the oxygen ions that remains is going to um, combine with one hydride ion that was already present and one H positive from an NADPH molecule to form a to form a water molecule and will give back or regenerate the NADP positive back, right? So this is the work process that uh, monooxygenases that they catalyze, right? So there are two types of uh, monooxygenases. One, the first type is a mitochondrial is the mitochondrial system, which is uh, you know related to the uh, reductive biosynthesis of molecules, as, as I just explained, of steroids of hormones. So in the steroidal synthesis in the gonads, uh, the, the same reactions they take place, and also in, it is helpful in the bile acid synthesis in the liver, as well as uh, the production of vitamin D three from the primitive vitamin D3 because uh, the primitive vitamin D3 needs to be hydroxylated uh, first in the liver to 25 hydroxycholecalciferol and then in the, in the kidney to 125 dihydroxycholecalciferol we will learn about vitamins later on in a separate video but for now just remember that we are actually hydroxylating uh, the, uh, the steroids, the bile acids and the uh, the, the, the vitamin, right? So you might be wondering why are we hydroxylating it? And the answer to that is that when we hydroxylate, we are actually increasing the solubility of that compound, right? Increasing that solubility, incre increasing the solubility of hormones and vitamins is important. Why? Because they are ultimately going to be transported in the blood. And when they are going to be transported, uh, transported in the blood, they have to be more soluble, right? In order to uh, be efficient in the transport. So hence we add the hydroxyl group so the uh, transport of those hormones can be made as smooth as possible and they are soluble enough right, to be used. The second is uh, the microsomal system of the cytochrome P450 monoxygenase system. Uh, this occurs in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the liver, uh, liver right? And uh, if you know, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is uh, related to the detoxification of compounds, of harmful compounds, right? For example, uh, any drug, you know, drugs have to be excreted in the urine or in the feces. So the same uh, reactions, they take place in this, in this system as well, that is hydroxylation of those drugs. And, those, uh, and that hydroxylation can serve two purposes. Number one, that hydroxylation can itself make the compound, uh, you know, um, inactive. Why? Because we're changing the chemical properties. We're changing the polarity of the compound by adding a hydroxyl group, right? So it may make it inactive and harmless. Or it is, uh, in a, you know, uh, indirectly also increasing the solubility of that compound. So if, they, if, they, if it's made more soluble, it can easily be excreted in our, uh, uh, in our urine or in the feces, right? So hence it, uh, you know, provides us uh, a way of detoxification as well. Uh, that's all for the C, for, uh, for the cytochrome P450 monoxygenase system. So I forgot to highlight the importance of NADPH in this reaction. The NADPH is giving off a hydrogen atom to uh, this one of the one atom of the oxygen molecule to form water, right? And this is a harmless product. What is a harmless product? So the importance lies in the fact that it provides an, a hydrogen atom. So, so it reduces one of the hydrogen, uh, one of the oxygen atom to water. Hence, now the fourth use of NADPH is in phagocytosis which actually means the engulfing up of foreign particles by your white blood cells, right? Now I've shown here the diagram, there's a bacterium which is going to be engulfed by a WBC or white blood cell via endocytosis, it is going to take in the bacterium itself and there are a set of enzymes that are going to then cause reactions to occur which will destroy this bacterium. Now let's learn how, right? First of all, now uh, this destruction initiates via an oxygen molecule which enters uh, the cytoplasm from nearby tissues. When it enters the cytosol of the WBC, 
uh, an enzyme called NADPH oxida oxidase is going to oxidize this NADPH. We have an NADPH molecule. Now this is, this is how the NADPH molecule is going to be used in this reaction. This NADPH molecule is going to be oxidized by NADPH oxidase using one atom of oxygen and then it will re regenerate NADP positive and a free radical will form. This is a free radical of oxygen which is very reactive and is dangerous to our body as well and is also bactericidal, right? Uh, now this free radical is going to convert to hydrogen peroxide either spontaneously or by an enzyme called superoxide dismutase, right? This is superoxide, right? Now, uh, you know, imagine that uh, NADPH was also being used to reduce this hydrogen peroxide when needed and now it is actually forming this hydrogen peroxide. It's helping to form hydrogen peroxide where it is needed, right? Because we're destroying the bacteria right now, not our body. So, <clears throat> hydrogen peroxide then is uh, in, an, in, in another reaction by an enzyme called myeloperoxidase is converted to HOCl hypochlorous acid by, uh, by the use of the chloride ion and this is the second enzyme which is important and this HOCl hypochlorous acid is much more bactericidal than uh, hydrogen peroxide itself however in people who have a defi deficiency of this enzyme uh, this H2O2 itself can also is also lethal enough to kill the bacteria but however HOCl is far more uh, fatal for a bacteri bacterium, right? So uh, that sums up uh, the use of NADPH in phagocytosis. Now, alright, so the last and final step, uh, final use of NADPH is in the synthesis of nitric oxide. Uh, nitric oxide has many functions, amongst them being uh, that it is a potent vasodilator, it prevents platelet aggregation, it has a role in phagocytosis and it also acts as a neurotransmitter, right? So how is nitric oxide produced? There is, a, there is an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase which produces nitric oxide and its substrates include arginine which is an amino acid, molecular oxygen and NADPH. Now when these three substrates are acted upon by nitric oxide synthase, nitric oxide forms with another byproduct known as citrulline. So, NADPH thus, you know, um, causes the formation of uh, nitric oxide. Now, the most important uh, uh, function of nitric oxide amongst its four functions is uh, in the vasodilation, right? In blood pressure control, it, uh, it causes vasodilation to, so that the blood pressure can be reduced. Now, how, how is that brought about? Uh, nitric oxide, it activates uh, guanylyl cyclase, much like adenyl cyclase. So guanosine is also another um, nucleotide base, uh, just like adenine. This guanylyl cyclase now activates cyclic GMP, guanosine monophosphate, which is going to activate a protein kinase G, G for guanosine. We had protein kinase A in the adenyl uh, cyclase pathway. So this protein kinase G is now going to decrease the uh, entry of calcium into the vascular endothelium. Now calcium as we know that it is important in the uh, contraction of muscles, right? So in the smooth muscle, muscles lining the vascular endothelium, the calcium concentration is decreased. The contra contraction will also be reduced, right? So that would actually cause relaxation of the smooth muscle walls lining the endothelium and uh, this is how uh, nitric oxide brings about vasodilation. That's all for the uses of NADPH. Uh, I hope you uh, understood this topic really well.